Welcome to today's Awesome Marriage Podcast. My special guest today, you may know as the CEO of Duck Commander or from his family's long running TV show, Duck Dynasty. Willie Robertson is my guest. He's also an author. His new book is Gospeller, Turning Darkness into Light, One Conversation at a Time. This is gonna be a lot of fun for all of us. Let's go to the studio right now. Willie, thank you so much for uh, coming to the Awesome Marriage Podcast. Great to have you today. Uh, welcome. It's good to be here. Thank you. Yeah, uh, it's good, great to have you. So the new book, I uh, love the title. So where did the whole idea of the title of the book come from? Uh, well, it actually came from my wife, Corey. Uh, she found the word uh, gospeller. Uh, so I was writing the book about sharing your faith. And uh, uh, originally I was, it was, we had kind of kicked around the idea of something evangelist and um she came in, she said, Willie, I found this word, and it's so cool. Uh, she said, it's a really old word, and so it was, it was a real common word um, a few hundred years ago, and then uh, it's kind of a dinosaur now. In fact, yeah. I've, I haven't found anybody, Harley, who had ever even heard of the word, and uh, and I said, I think that's the perfect title, Gospeller, and it simply means one's, one who shares their faith, either publicly or personally, and not necessarily pastoral. It's more like just common people sharing their faith and so yeah. um you know for a few hundred years people were uh, they were known gospelers and so that's the kind of how they were characterized as people who would share their faith and so yeah i thought it fit great and then um and then the subtitle was uh turning darkness into light one conversation at a time and um, um and that was a uh, uh, kind of pretty much what the book boils down to is having conversations um you know, to try to to try to get people from the the dark side to the to the yeah. light. You know, and because uh, uh, almost always that happens through a conversation of some sort. Absolutely, it's almost lifestyle evangelism, isn't it? Just mm -hmm. yeah. connecting with people, spending time with them. Yeah, and it's written more for the church. You know, it's written for the church. Uh, again, not necessarily pastoral. It's written for just common people who are members yeah. of the church who. Um, you know, who would who I think if we ever woke them up and, you know, if if, if the church starts actively sharing their faith uh, with their friends and people at work and their family, um, uh, then I think we'll really see a, a big revival, you know, um, uh, from not just not just going to church, but actually getting active into that. And because what I found is when you're when you're active in sharing your faith, it, it takes care of a lot of other things for you as well. And so keeps you in the word. Uh yeah. you want to know you want to study uh, so that you can share uh keeps you hospitable it keeps you talking to people probably the main thing is it keeps you from being focused in on yourself um and so i know uh, that's a big struggle especially today you know we get so focused oh, yeah. in ourselves that we we forget about other people because we're like we got our own problems our own stuff we're dealing with and so um so yeah this can uh just the idea can do that and so one of the big things about writing the book was um I taught a class at a at a local church here about about sharing your faith, and I heard a lot of reasons why people don't share their faith. And so, generally, it was because I don't know the Bible well enough. Uh, yeah. You know, I don't think it's my gift. Um, I don't know where to start. That's a big one. Like I just don't know where to start. Yeah. How to how to have this awkward conversation? And uh, you know, I think we bought into a lie if we if we believe that. Well, that's something you should keep to yourself, you know, and so I think that's kind of a a misnomer and a lie, pro probably of the evil one uh, that keeps us with our mouth shut. So, yeah, just kind of yeah, wanted dude. to knock all those um, columns out out from under people and say, hey, you know, uh, I think that Great Commission was for all of us and uh, uh, to be active yeah. and, and going out there and sharing our faith. Yeah, no, I totally agree with you. And, and I think there is, there's barriers I think that he throws at us just so we don't. Uh, but I think the more we feel comfortable, I love the word gospeller, and I don't think I've ever heard it either. Uh, it's interesting how God uses our wives in our lives. <laughs> so, with Corey coming up with the idea, uh, Nancy's done the same thing in so many things for, for us. And uh, but but it's um, it's a good word. Hopefully that would get back into our uh, vocabulary. Old, yeah, uh, for sure. Over time, over time. So talk a little bit about, I know the people have obviously followed your family and all that, just about your background with sites, you know, what just for you and growing up in the home that you grew up in. Yeah. I mean, for me, it, um, 
you know, there's a big part of my faith journey that happened before I could even remember. Uh, and that's actually what I focus on the first chapter of the book about. Uh, I call it um, where my gospel genealogy, you know, and I go through the idea of like uh, a few years back, we were got real intrigued with uh, our family history and our lineage. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, 23 and me and going back, you know, where our ancestors are from. And so uh, I kind of took that same notion and thought about my spiritual, you know, DNA, where that come from and uh, where did that start? And so, uh, which we just had a movie come out this past September called The Blind, where it was Phil and Kay's journey uh, into faith. And so, right. and then the more I thought about it, I thought, wow, if that, if that hadn't have happened, you know, uh, if they wouldn't have turned their lives around, their marriage was essentially over. Um, and really the last ditch ever was, was sharing the faith. And so, I mean, that was the last thing that could actually fix it. Um, they were so far beyond um, uh, any, any sort of hope. And so, uh, and a guy went to a bar and actually shared his faith with, with Phil, planted that seed. And then it was that, that led to uh, Phil turn his life around my mother, forgiven Phil and uh, keeping that family together. And, and again, I don't even really remember that happening. I mostly what I saw was the after results of that. Yeah. Um, but it kept the family together. Phil was then able to start Duck Commander, which then Duck Dynasty came out of that. And so uh, every day it affects my life. You know, even talking to you today and whoever's listening uh, is again just another testament to the gospel message. And so, um, so that's where it started. And then I grew up. Um, you know, that was a completely different lifestyle of what my, where my parents had lived up to that point. Um, so these new things, like we started going to church and I went to church <laughs> camp, uh, which I'm glad I went to church camp because that's where I met Corey. Uh, I met her in fifth grade <laughs> yeah. out at church camp, which is where we met. And uh, uh, we actually met the same church, and um, which again was a huge part of my life. That's where, you know, I found my wife and uh, my brother married his wife who was also in the youth group the church was a big deal to us the youth group was a big deal the yeah we learned a lot from the youth ministers and um and so that was so impactful in my life and uh phil's one of the men that taught me but there were many others you know there was a group of men that really uh taught mentored me as a youngster in my faith and one of the one of the central things that we always had common in this particular place we were at was soul winning evangelism sharing our faith, being mm -hmm. um, proficient at that. And so, uh, yeah, I was, me and Jace, like when we were in the youth group, we would study with hundreds and hundreds of people, um, converted a lot of people as teenagers. Um, so, yeah, it's always just kind of been in my, my DNA. I watched Dad do that over and over and over. I've seen him yeah. talk to thousands of people um, down at the house and baptizing people in the river uh, all the time. And so, uh, yeah, it's been been my my journey and my walk um as as long as i can remember yeah and i think knowing your parents story before and and uh and then seeing the difference that you saw because you weren't probably aware of what was going on in their lives in the past no no i kind of i sensed it i mean i knew that they were they'd come out of something i mean you could tell that there was some um and then the older i got i, I would hear the stories dad really rarely, rarely talked about it i mean he would he would say i was a heathen you know but he didn't get into details, but, uh, through other people. And I actually became, uh, very good friends. And, uh, one of my teachers of the gospel and, uh, even in seminary was the, was the pastor who actually, uh, went to talk to Phil in the bar. So I was able to hear a lot of the stories. And so I knew the backstory of kind of where Phil's yeah. journey was and, uh, where he got through and where he ended up. I, I, Something that I want to ask you when you're saying that about being a teenager and being involved in church and what a significant uh, part of your life it was. What do you say to, to teens today that, you know, there's so many things that pull at them so many different ways. Um, and probably you had some of it maybe in a just different way back then. You didn't have social media, you didn't have all that kind of stuff. But just it kept you on track of, of, of you know, following the Lord through Good. those high school years that are so tough. Yeah, I mean, one is that that. I mean, I think kids, I think teenagers can can do exceptional things for Christ. Um, you know, and the the fact that if there's a notion that they can't, then I just think that's again, that's another lie that that they can't be productive. And so, yeah. I mean, most movements of anything happen usually with youth. You know, in countries, yeah. most of us youth, you know, are 
look at our military. It's all it's mostly it's young, you know, young people and young people are, you know, when they get engaged and excited. Now, what we find today is, um, I mean, one, I, I will, it's tough and I, and I don't even have a, I don't have a reference point because I didn't grow up with cell phones yep. and, and all that. So, I, I mean, obviously I know what they are and I can't imagine um, uh, as a kid being like that. So, uh, life did seem slower and even where we were growing up here, we grew up at the end of a dead end street, you know, on a dirt road, you know, beside a river. Yeah. So life was kind of slow and there just wasn't a lot of distractions, as many distractions. I think the, the sinful part is still there. I mean, still, you yeah. know, the, the same sins and the same things that can draw uh, people away. But, uh, but I think two parents have gotten, you know, it's, um, there's just so many other things that, they, that we sign our kids up for and they get so involved in so many different things. And so, um, sadly, a lot of times there's just not room for, yeah. you know, spiritual activities and, um, or they're, you know, they're kind of let off by being with a group or being, um, even have the ability to be taught by other people. And so, which puts a lot of pressure back on the parents, you know, to be, if you're the, yes. if you're the only single source of, you know, outside of maybe going to a church on the, on a Sunday with, uh, you know, there's very few Bible classes anymore and there's not things like that where you actually learn. So you're sitting through a hour long service, you know, yeah. um, with a small message, a little bit of singing and, uh, there's not, you know, there's not a lot of activity there. And so if they're not involved with that group of people or other teachers, um, uh, it can be tough, you know, it's cause there's just not a lot of, cause you're not, uh, you don't get to school, you know, as much. Right. I mean, when I was younger, right. we would actually get taught spiritual ideas and thoughts at school. And I didn't go to a Christian school. So I went to a public school, <laughs> just a different time, yeah. you know, where you could absolutely you would far more expect to learn about God at school, um, than, than anti-God. Um, and then college, I mean, good grief, you know, that's, that's gotten so, um, bizarre now with what, with what most colleges are teaching. So, yeah, I think it's, I think it's tough, but I, I don't, you know, I think we don't move the line. I think the standard's still the same. The following Jesus is still the same, the cost of being a follower of Jesus. And so, mm-hmm. and, you know, I think we don't, I think what we do is we lower the bar and we're, we're like, well, if we can make this watered down and simpler and. And I, just, I, you know, I think people reject that, you know, kids, especially, you know, they reject that. And so, you know, hopefully we'll see again, like, like with books like this is saying, I hey, know, go out and the, the, the bar is set higher for you to actually share your faith. It's not just to try to show up to church. It's actually to, you know, share your yeah. faith. I mean, when Jesus called Peter, the, the only thing I can read is what he told him was, I'm going to teach you how to go after other people. That was it. Yeah. <laughs> and he yeah. chopped everything and followed him. So. I think Jesus had a clear understanding of what this was all about. The Great Commission, if you think about it, he said, make disciples, um, baptize people, and teach people. Well, there's a lot of believers who aren't doing any of those three, you know. And all those three you can't do without having a conversation. So uh, you're not going to make disciples. You're not going to baptize people. You're not going to teach people unless you have, unless you open your mouth. And so uh, uh, there's three. I know in Acts chapter 1, Jesus said, you know, the Holy Spirit's going to come. You'll have power. You'll be my witnesses. And the witnesses was witness what you just saw, you know, which is me, you know, not just dying, which I think most of them were aware that he died, but that he actually came back from the dead. And then we see yeah. all through the book of Acts, you just see that over and over and over where they're just converting people, teaching others in all sorts of different ways. Um, and so I think the, what I see is the message of the New Testament is to get it out to other people. And so mm-hmm. and I don't know that that's the message that's being conveyed a lot today. Um, in fact, I would think there would be some believers who would say, I never knew that was even part of the deal. You know, nobody ever told me yeah. that was part of it. You know, like I raised my hand in a service and I thought I just was supposed to try to go to church and be a good person. And uh, that's not mission though. That's not a mission. Uh, that's a really low, low bar mission. And, I find that people, that's not really a big enough mission. And so I think Jesus gave us the mission to live in the Great Commission. And so, yeah, that's what I'm trying to pull people back to. Yeah. Maybe maybe kickstart something and say, yes, I can do this. And we can break down, you know, some passages that, that I show people. It's generally about seven. I mean, I got about seven passages that I share with people when I, if I'm sitting and talking with them. And, um, and it starts with caring about people. And, um, you know, it, you don't have a... If you're going to have a conversation with someone, you got to care about them. And I just yeah. find that, especially in the world today, we just, 
it looks like we just don't really care much about each other. <laughs> and so, we, you know, and Absolutely. so you got to care about other people, you know. And um, I used the woman at the well as a great example for, you know, Jesus showed her that he cared about her. And, uh, and that conversation that the whole village ended up coming to know Jesus by the end of the chapter. But it started with one question, which was, can I get a drink of water? That's where it started. Yeah. So, so simple. It can start really simple. You know, that's not some theological big giant no. uh, thing that you get into. It's just, it starts there and then it can lead. And then he got into her story. And then next thing you know, she's back telling everybody about Jesus. Yeah. Now that's so good. And I think, I think you're right. I think we have it. We've lowered the bar in our culture. You know, I was saying when you were talking about um, just the stuff you did growing up and, you know, I can remember growing up and probably end up pretty close when my kids were playing sports and stuff. We didn't play sports on Wednesday night or Sunday. Mm-hmm. And now it's, it's pretty, it's pretty common. So I think we did, and I think all those things happen just kind of gradually to the point that, that I think today as parents, grandparents, they've got to be real intentional about yeah. the things that you're talking about, about making sure our kids do know things that, that sometimes they don't get anywhere else. Well, and you don't, you know, I'm okay with like, you don't have to be at a, some sort of building to, to be spiritual right. for sure. And so, but again, if you're, if you're not going to do that, you're not going to rely on uh, some of those aids and tools that we have uh, that are available. Uh, if you're going to do it yourself, then you're going to ma- have to make sure that you're the one teaching and, and being that God around your job, around all the other things that you have going on. And, and that's probably the biggest problem, right? Is that the parents are the ones who, you know, they're sucked into social media. They're, su- you know, they're saying, yep. oh, I wish they weren't on their phone all the time. But the parents on their phone all the time. So right. kids just watching right. them going, I'm just doing what you do. It's the kids and, uh, exactly. You know? And so, exactly. yeah, I think we, we, we say something with our mouth, but we, if we're going to live that out. And so, um, yeah, if, I mean, it's not – because it's not that you don't have to aspire to, to be great. At, you can be great at athletics or music or, or whatever it is. And I think, sure. I think sometimes Christians think that we, we shouldn't even be that, you know, that we're just going to be mediocre people who go to church. Yeah. No, I think we can do great, but if you're gonna if you're gonna excel at those things, then you know I want to make sure that I excel more with the kingdom of God. So, yeah, like, that's good. I mean, I was on a, the most watched TV show in the the history of cable TV. Doesn't mean I can't excel as a you know in reality yeah. TV or business or or whatever that is, but. I certainly don't want to just be known for that. I want to be known for what I do for the kingdom of God. That's how I want to be known in heaven. So I've even, I got to pick it up and go even more going, now this is what's most important. And as we're given those platforms. um, So if you're going to, you know, if your kid's going to, if you're like, we're going to do all this stuff and, you know, then you got to make sure you're teaching them that this is not the most important thing. Because if you don't, if you don't watch it, it's going to look like the other thing is. Because when there's a choice, you tend to go now, you know, we, we focus on baseball or we focus on football or yep. we focus on dance or cheerleading or whatever that is. And you, you don't, you, you may not say it overtly, but what you're telling them is that's the most important thing or even school, you know, it can be, yep. it can be ideas that are good. It can be school like uh, education. Um, education's great. Education's important. It's not the most important. Um, yeah. And I think a lot of believers would be really sad if they thought, well, my kid got so educated, but somewhere in down the line of getting all the education, they completely lost their faith in God. And uh, yeah. and now they're, now they're part of the world. And so, and there'll be ones that we have to now try to go after with gospel and try to get them the gospel <laughs> and get them converted. So. Get, them, get them to come back in. Yeah. I, no, I think so. So, so somebody's, watching us listen to us today and they're thinking, I want to take that, um, that step. What would you say to them? Is it just starting with that conversation, just being present with someone? I think it is. I think it's, I want to be intentional. Um, and I'm, I'm looking for change, uh, if there needs to be change. And so I think that's probably the biggest separator in our conversations is are we, are we having conversations uh, they're looking for change. I mentioned the woman at the well. So Jesus asked yeah. her for some water. Uh, Jesus starts mentioning spiritual things. She has no idea what he's talking about, which is very understandable. Um, uh, I wouldn't expect people of the world to understand spiritual ideas. 
Uh, Jesus doesn't stop there, though. Jesus doesn't say, hey, let's have a quick prayer, and I hope you figure it out. So he out. gets into her story, and she gives him a little of the story. You know, he mentions her husband. She gives him a little bit, but not the whole story, which is understandable. Uh, she just met him. And so when I talk to people, they, they won't give you their whole story maybe at first. But but I think the reason Jesus wanted to get into her story was because he knew she was going to have to deal with that story, you know. These are small towns, and I think we, we even in the towns we live in, you know, like if I've been through six marriages, probably everybody in my town would understand that, know that. Um, yeah. So yeah. she had to deal with that. Then she goes back to her village, and then she says, he told me every, you got to meet this guy. He told me everything I ever done, which to me would have been a negative. Like I would be mortified if someone said he told me everything I'd done. But somehow that was a positive, and somehow she took that as a positive. She brings the town. And so it's it's conversations that are looking for change. And so as I talk to people, they're all different. All these stories are different. You know, when I sit down and, and talk to Is someone, it? someone could be in pain. Someone could be, you know, uh, have been damaged. Somebody may be steeped in sin. Somebody may have, you know, it's, it's just you never know where it's going to start. Sometimes the conversations right. start at different points. You know, if someone comes to me and says, I want to get baptized, you know, well, that's kind of a that's kind of putting the cart for the horse. I want to make sure they understand what that is, <laughs> what, and so, yeah. you know, what that means before. Um, and sometimes people are ready for a life change. Sometimes they're not at all. When the guy talked to my dad, he was not ready. He, he it was adversarial. He didn't even want to hear the gospel. Uh, but he, uh, but he, but the guy pushed on through and went ahead and planted that seed regardless. And so, uh, if somebody said, I'm ready, we would talk about where they're at and why they would even say that, you know, where did they get to that point? of where they wanted to say that. And then I definitely would offer the solution through Jesus. And um, um, because I don't judge people. Most of the time I'm talking to someone, I don't even know them that well. So I'm not judging where they are. And I just talk to them about where their life is and where they think their relationship with Jesus is. And, um, you know, if I ask them questions, I would, I would, uh, a simple question, like if I were to ask you where you're married, uh, I would hope someone would say yes or no, or, or I'm engaged, or, you know, there's only yeah. a few answers. But if I ask someone, do they have a relationship with Jesus? Here's what I hear a lot of times. I don't know, or I'm not sure, or I haven't thought about that in a long time. So if I got that answer for marriage, that would be strange, right? If I said, are you married? And they're like, I don't know. I'm not sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And, and so I think that there, I think we can, you know, uh, know, I think there's, there's certain verses that, you know, that really stand out. Always be prepared to give an answer for the hope that you have. And so I want to be prepared for that. And uh, you know what? The, one of the greatest teachers for me of preparation, it, besides knowing the word, but it's experience, you know, too. It's more I talk to people. I'm like, ah, I've heard something similar to this. And so, yeah. um, so the more you do it, and I would liken that to anything. I'm an outdoorsman, so the more I hunt and fish, the better I get at it. The more I cook, you know, the better I get. I've said, ah, run into this. And um, and so, um, and we're talking about having a conversation that can actually change someone's life, their kid's life, generational change. These are important things. And so that has to go up to one of our highest priorities. And I think Jesus made that very clear. He said, I came to seek and save what was lost. And I think Having these conversations, I think it's more of an art. It's not a science. And so, Dude. you know, I've told two people the gospel before. One says, I'm in, let's go. And I've had another say, I'm not interested at all. So it's not science. It's not if I tell you this, then you'll do this. It's more of an art. Uh, I think Paul explains that when he says the he was still praying. He said, pray for me that the mystery of the gospel can come out of my mouth even Dude. clearer. And so, which is strange to me, like Paul knew the gospel more than anyone. Why is he still asking for prayer <laughs> that he could say it better, you know? And uh, he says, yeah, I become yeah. all things to all men uh, as to snatch some from the fire, you know? And so uh, these are the ideas. And so you never know. All these stories are different. Um, and um, and there's even people in the New Testament that that hear it and then don't come around, you know? And so the rich yep. young ruler walks up and Jesus lays it out to him. He goes, nah. I'm not there, and but I'm looking for change, much like Zacchaeus, where Zacchaeus, when Jesus goes to his house, and he goes, I'm changing my whole life. I'm changing everything. And in fact, that that is where Jesus said, this is why I came, to seek and save what was lost. Again, back yeah. to a mission, back to a mission of what to live, is to spread it to other people. And so we've got it. That's great. Uh, but now, who else can we get it to? Yeah. 
And I think that the example of the rich young ruler, I think that's quite a fear I hear from people that what if they say no? But that's to me, I think what God has helped me see that if, if God wants me to share with somebody, then it becomes the Holy Spirit's job after that as yeah, to what the response is. Yeah. And and if they say no, that I did what God wanted me to do. And it's not yeah. a failure, right? Well, Paul says, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it has the power of salvation. It, it's not yeah. us. It's the the powers in the Holy, uh, the gospel, the powers in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit moves, yeah. you know, moves, and we just got to. We just got to be there, ready to roll whenever it moves, and so, um, and so that's the. I think that's the relationship that we have, and um, and it's much like marriage. You know, it's like Corey and I don't have to be together to be on the same page. And I can. I'm thinking about what she's thinking about, and I'm trying. You know, trying to please yeah. her, and trying to say, oh, she'll like this, or. And so that's that relationship. I think that you get, you know, uh, with the spirit, and as you're, you know, we're here on this earth, and you know. I mean, once we're once we're saved by Jesus, essentially we're eternal at that point, and so there will be a point where we pass on. Um, but man, while we're here on this earth, you know, we've got uh, we've got a job to do. Once we're in heaven, we won't be able to do it. So, so the people that are that's here, right. that's right. And for us in our generation, we are the ones. You know, we are we are to our generation. We're the ones. This is how they see the church. This is how they see Christ. You know, they see it lived out in us because Christ lives in us, and so. Um, once we once we become the ambassadors for Christ and we're we're doing that, that should be our job. It should be obvious. It should be it should pour out of our life like the fruit of the spirit pours out of our life. This should pour out of our life. Yeah, it comes with. I love that you put the, the personal thing. It comes with having that personal relationship with somebody or the conversations with people. I think that's the best way to dispel maybe the broad thoughts people might have about faith or about Jesus or they, they've mm-hmm. heard or haven't heard or things like that. It's just, it's just really being real with them mm-hmm. and then come alongside it. Because I think people yeah, can it. relate to that. We're not trying to force it down somebody's throat. No, but you would have a hard time for me talking about, um, you know, marriage without talking about Corey. So like, I mean, I brought it yeah. up like several times and, um, you know, I always think like if someone says, well, it's not my, it's not my gift to share my faith. Well, It'd be like if I said it's not my gift to mention my wife's name. It, that's not a gift. That's, <laughs> that's just going to naturally happen, you know. Yeah. And so yeah. if you have a if you have a great relationship with Jesus, it's probably going to come out as to you know uh, why you do what you do or why you don't do what you don't do. And so I mean, all these ideas will come out. I, I, certainly, your kids will hear it and see it, and your family who you're absolutely. Around. So, um, and but if that's not the case, then I, I think that's that's probably one of our biggest struggles. Are these families aren't seeing it. They see it maybe one time, you know, they show up to a church building, but they're not, they're not seeing it the other six days. And so I think once that gets yeah. active and engaged, because um, most of these conversations that were happening, particularly in the book of Acts, were all during the week. You know, this was, um, well, that one with the well, I think that was around noon. And you've got, you know, Philip talking to an Ethiopian on a journey. You've got Zacchaeus uh, happening. So these are all during the week, all different times. And I think once you... Once you start sharing that faith on Thursdays and on Tuesdays and Friday nights, you know, uh, you'll see a lot more. You, you plant a lot more seeds like that. You'll see more of a harvest for sure. Doesn't have to be on Sunday between mm-hmm. 11 and 12, right? In fact, Sunday's probably one of the hardest places to do it because mostly that's a gathering of believers anyway. So, um, <laughs> right. it's and exactly. for most of us, we don't talk on Sunday. You know, uh, there's only a couple of people actually even speaking on, on that day. So it's, it's, I, I think it's a harder place to this year <laughs> to have a conversation at least and though we have opportunities every day i think it's just being aware of them and i think like you said taking for someone that hasn't or maybe somebody that's watching this or listening that that tried somewhere and it didn't go well or they just bogged down to, to not give up to just mm-hmm. that god will equip us for that oh yeah but i think we've got to study and read the we got to read yeah. the word and know it in our heart and yeah i was doing a bible study but i was teaching this class and this class told me he didn't have the gift of reading the Bible. I said, buddy, that's not a gift. That's just a discipline that you <laughs> But I think that's what we, we – he was trying yeah. to use some church lingo, basically saying, I don't really read the Bible. And and it was obvious by how he lives his life. It was obvious they didn't read the Bible that much. Um, and so, yeah, you got to get in there and study that. And I think it's fascinating. And I think, you know, uh, you can just probably replace a lot of the other things that you do uh, where you listen and watch, whether it's television or music or whatever, and just – you know, there's so many ways now with the internet, 
I mean, we, I think we think about the bad parts of the internet, but man, there's so much good. You can, I mean, I can dial up sermons from all over the world. Yeah. You know? um, I listen to the sermons you listen to. Uh, yeah. You're in Oklahoma. I listen to your same sermons here in Louisiana, you know, yeah. uh, that I can just listen to, uh, to throughout the day, throughout the week. And so, uh, man, there's just a lot of good, a lot of good stuff out there where you can learn. And uh, absolutely, you know, without just wasting our time doing, you know, just scrolling through social media and uh, just doing yeah, they got the new version Bible app now. You got so many ways that we can yeah. and uh, that fit in with with you're right, the good part of technology. You start learning the word, you'll stand out in the crowd. I can tell you that. <laughs> not, not a whole lot of people doing it. So.